today because we were having a problem with our HDMI cable. So if all of a sudden the stream cuts out and goes to a green screen, it's because our HDMI cable is kind of broken and not really doing its thing. So, so just going to let you know, reverse drag shake is the worst thing to happen to bartending. I, you know, you know what, man, Robert, I, I would tend to agree with that. I, I think it's completely, completely false. I don't think that it's. What's up, Grizz Axman? Grizz Axman, I like that. Always great to be here. Always great to see you, Lunar Galaxy. Uh, what, what's up? Okay, what else is going on? I guess you had some egg on your face. I did kind of have some egg on my face. I don't like it when I fail like that at, at, uh, at, uh, at things that I'm trying to do. But today I'm all set up. I have everything. I got my favorite workhorse bourbon, old granddad bonded, 100 proof. I've got some simple syrup. I've got some water to drink if I start getting a little too tipsy. I got my footed rocks glass, which is what I usually do. Like when I'm working at Kohl's and stuff, this is the glass that I'll do a whiskey. I don't have bitters with me, but I don't, I don't, this isn't really about the bitters. Although maybe I should get some bitters. No, I left them outside. It's fine. We can do without bitters today. And then this is a Georgian punch glass. That's what they call this. Uh, this is actually the glass that they use uh, in, for like a traditional uh, Irish coffee. But we're going to be using that because I don't have two of these. And I don't have two of these. I have one of each. That's why, kids, it's always good to buy a set. The other thing I wanted to say before we start is I have to plug these people because I love them. This is not a sponsored. This isn't sponsored. Uh, no one's paying me to say this, but I got to tell you, I've been having so much trouble finding kind of harder to find bottles. And uh, I finally broke down and ordered from this place called Bitters and Bottles in San Francisco. And it was an amazing experience. Not only did I get the bottles that I ordered within a day and a half, but also shipping was only like $12.99. Now, I don't know exactly know where every like where it ships to everywhere but uh so i can't tell you like i'm assuming that they can they can ship to you if you can get booze through the mail in your state if you can't i'm sorry but they have so much good stuff i've i found bottles that i've been tr meaning to find for a long time uh, i finally got my hands on some um some uh, ransom gin which is i've not been able to get here and the shipping was actually faster than many places that are shipping inside la so i just wanted to give them a little plug because they deserve it uh, and I'm so happy that I got my bottles. So bitters and bottles, if you guys are looking for bottles there, and they have some really good selections of like bourbon and rye, and they got a really good selection of Amaro. So check them out. All right. Would love to make a Laurel Canyon, but have no Amaro Montenegro. Now I know it's not the same, but will there be another Amaro that might work? Marge, you can try Amaro Nonino would be a decent, uh, but very different. And then also I could see Chichiaro going well in there, although it will be a lot more bitter. Uh, and a lot heavier. Uh, that's correct. Can't remember who said it, but that's the same. That's Marius saying whoever, what he's saying, just whatever. Uh, if only we had that there. Japan is very hit or miss when it, when you, what you can find. Yeah, right. All right. Uh, shall we get to this uh, reverse dry shake business, guys? What do you think? Should we do it or should we hang out for a little while longer? The longer we hang out, the longer it's going to take me to get a drink, though. That's the thing. So I kind of want to do it now. Down with Malort, Robin Newquist. Does that mean you hate Malort or are you trying to get me to drink Malort? Because I will tell you right now, guys, I am not drinking any Malort today. None. Not even a sip. Not even a tiny little sipple will I, of Malort will pass my lips. Uh, okay, cool. Let's do it. Let's get the shake on. Let's get our shake on, all right? I'm going to go get my ice. get some similar all right guys let's try this out I've got similar big pieces of rock ice first thing we're gonna do is the whiskey sour on its own so three quarters an ounce of simple syrup into the glass we're gonna we're actually hand squeezing lemon today I like to actually cut off the little top too it makes for a better squeeze all right, let's get our three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. Oh, come on. All right, there goes one. I didn't cut off the top of that, but that's fine. Is that three quarters of an ounce? 
three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, freshly squeezed, two ounces of bourbon, We're using our old granddad, hunter proof bonded. Bam. All right. Going to go get our eggs. I was going to pretend like I didn't have any eggs again, but I decided against it because it's just cheesy dad humor. I'm going to get a little bowl for them too. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's, let's crack it in the other tin so if we mess up, we don't mess up all our alcohol. All right, so this we're going to do the regular way. This will be the control here. So this is our regular. Oh, I should have brought a rag out. Do I have a rag? Do I got a rag anywhere? On the one day that I don't, we're not wearing an apron. All right, that's all oh, there. Ah, there one is, there one is. All right. All right, let's go. We're going to let that marinate, then we're going to give it a nice shaky poo. All right, there we go. That's enough. Nice and frothy. Okay, here we go. Big rock. Pretty good, guys. Pretty good. All right. Now I'm going to have to use this for the reverse dry shake. So don't have to clean it too much. All right, guys. So there's that. Keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on that. All right, here we go. Here we go, you guys. Lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce. Well, that was a nice three quarters of an ounce, right? Well, it's a little under. It's a little under. So let's make it exact. We made the last one exact. Let's make that one exact. All right, here we go. So there we go. Three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. That is the big design flaw in this bottle, is if your hands even get a little wet, it's impossible to get the cap off. All right, here we go. Ready? Now for this one, I guess it, you know, I, I got the rock of ice just because I wanted it to be the same. But honestly, for this one, it doesn't even matter if you do a rock of ice because we're going to be doing the egg. Uh, we're going to be doing the, uh, the dry shake second. So hold on. We're going to crack our egg. Sorry. Okay, combine this, add our piece of ice, nice hard shake, now we're going to strain this into here. 
and dry shake it. And now we can just give it a free, free pour right into the glass. All right, there it is. Now, I don't know if you can see this. I kind of want to bring this closer to the camera. But these are really big bubbles, not as smooth. Whereas this kind of made a meringue on top. I almost want to take a picture of this and post it. I'll put this on the Instagram stories um, maybe later tonight when we're all done. So you can see the difference in quality between the two. I wouldn't say that this is frothier, honestly. Maybe a tiny bit, but the thing is, is that the froth, the bubbles are really huge. It's not as good a, um, it's not as good. It's really not, and I don't think it's frothier. What do you think, guys? Um, I, don't, I don't see the comments now because Marius is fiddling, but uh, like I don't think that this is really much frothier, but the froth quality of the bubbles is a lot larger, and it's not as attractive. And it's not going to hold your bitters. I wish I had a thing of bitters here, but I brought them outside and I wasn't thinking about it. But uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to hold your bitters as well. The bitters are going to kind of fall through this foam, whereas this is going to, you're going to be able to create a design on it. So, all right. You know, I really think that this is a method, you know, the reverse dry shake I think works for people who haven't quite perfected how to shake a sour. Um, but I think that this is the uh, inferior method to the, to the regular way, um, as evidenced by the two different types of foam that we got. The thing is, is that every time I do any type of sour video, I literally will get 25 comments about why I didn't reverse dry shake. And this is exactly why, because it's just not as good. All right, bubbles seem to be collapsing more quickly in reverse. Yeah, totally co collapsing more quickly. And I did, take that, uh, I did take that picture, so I'll post it in the story so you guys can see um, you know, how different in quality the bubbles are. Wait, it's interesting why I don't have quality large ice for the reserve star shake anyway, despite the bubbles. Well, here's the thing. You should ne if you don't have large quality ice, you don't have like large, like, you know, good quality ice, First of all, you can make it with literally a cooler and, and tap water, and hot tap water. That's all you need. And then if you can put that little cooler into your freezer. But literally, when I make, I make all of my ice myself and... This is all I use. This is it. This is what I use. I use a Coleman, a, a Coleman, a Coleman four liter cooler to make it. And you can actually use larger ones. You can use four gallon ones if you want, um, but I can't fit that in a freezer here at my house. So I just use this and it makes a really nice size block. You put hot, you could put hot tap water in here, it'll come out perfectly clear. Um, and so it's not a lot of effort to make clear ice, but if you really can't, if you don't have the freezer space, just take a couple of pieces of small ice and then shake those until they fully dilute. And if you do that, then you'll, you'll still be getting that good froth and you'll get the right amount of dilution. The only thing is that your cocktail won't be as cold. Um, but there you go. So uh, I wouldn't say that that's really more foam. Uh, I think it's settled differently in the glass either way uh, because I think it's settled differently in this glass because it's taller and this one's a little squatter. Uh, but the foam on here is better, much better. So this is the regular shake. That was the reverse dry shake. Whenever I see a reverse dry shake, it seems that people equate bigger bubbles with better foam, and I'm the opposite mindset. I like the creamer foam. Yeah, exactly. The bigger bubbles is actually less stable than this really tight-knit foam. This tight-knit foam is where you can literally draw on the top of it with bitters, and the bitters isn't going to fall down into your cocktail. It's going to stay up, up on top. You could do a stencil on this, whereas this, I'm not, it's like, look at how, it's like beer foam, you know? Look at that. Um, I'm an Aberdeen resident, born and bred, and I'm not speaking about it. Okay. Not spiking about it. Nay, spiking about it. I like it. Hey, all fellow Scott here to Glasgow, East Kilbride. Hey, well, welcome to our small channel. <laughs> I 
Reverse shake, uh, reverse shakes drinks lost temp lose temperature faster than the egg, and the, and the egg gets smellier. Well, honestly, dude, I gotta tell you about the smelly egg thing. Nobody should have smelly eggs. I, I hear this thing about the smell of eggs. Um, honestly, I mean, you hear professional bartenders say about the smell of eggs. If you are using fresh eggs, there should be absolutely no smell. If there's a smell to your eggs, the eggs are not fresh, and you should not be using them. You should use fresh eggs uh, when you can. If you can't, maybe just don't use eggs at all and just do like a traditional, I mean like super traditional old school with sour, put that on pebble ice or crushed ice or even in a rocks glass. Um, but eggs should not have an off color smell. They really shouldn't. Uh, are you going to drink either of those cocktails? If not, can I have one? Yes, you can have this one. I don't want the other one. There you go. That's yours. This one's mine. Cheers. Do you have a dry, oh, that is so good. It's been so long since I've actually, you know, drank a whiskey sour with intention. Do you have a dry shake with egg white alternatives? Yes. Um, do you have to dry shake with egg white alternatives? Yes, you do. You have to dry shake always because when you're dry shaking, you're emulsifying the liquid. So usually what you're doing, if you're using like agua faba or even that fee foamer, or if you're using um, soy lecithin, then you, you still need to whip the air through it to emulsify it because all of those things have like the fatty compounds that they need to emulsify like egg white. And the whole reason why it gets this way is because when you're shaking, you're actually driving air through it and kind of whipping it into a meringue. Hi, Leandro. Today I watched your Sazerac episode. In my recipe, I use one ounce rye, one ounce cognac, and you are just using rye whiskey. Am I doing this cocktail wrong? I mean, it is tasty, but I was wondering. You are not doing it wrong. Actually, I like to do uh, a split base sometimes. Sometimes I'll do like an ounce and a half of rye and then half an ounce of uh, cognac or brandy. I actually really like using Argonaut brandy. Uh, I like the, there's a Argonaut brandy expression. I think it's only available to bars called Saloon Strength, which is a little bit higher proof. And I like to use a half an ounce of that. The thing is, is that the, the, the Sazerac, its history, is that when the Sazerac was first invented, it was actually invented as a brandy cocktail, okay? Or a, a cognac cocktail. Uh, actually, the reason why it's called cognac is because the type, uh, the reason why it's called a Sazerac is because the type of cognac is used is called Sazerac at Forge de Fils. Um, Sazerac at, at Forge de Fils, which is the type of cognac that they were using. The thing is, is that um, there was a, like there was a, uh, a blight on, uh, basically there was a, a, uh, an aphid that was eating the uh, European grapes. Uh, and because of that, uh, it stopped wine production and brandy production and we weren't able to get cognac in this country. And when that happened, they switched the recipe to rye whiskey and then it kind of remained rye whiskey. So you can do a split base. I actually love a split base. In that video, it was a very old video. I just decided to do the one that we did at Kohl's and that one was a fully rye. But if you come to Kohl's, if you came to Kohl's now and I made it for you, it would actually be an ounce and a half of rye and then half an ounce of, uh, half an ounce of brandy. Okay, what else? Uh, what else, you guys? Just a reminder, everyone. Yeah. Uh, can you use rum in place of bourbon? Uh, for this drink. What rum would you use? Uh, could you use rum in place of bourbon for this? Yeah, absolutely. A sour is a sour. You could do a rum sour. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I would either split the rum bases or I would just go with a with like a really nice funky Jamaican rum. Uh, I really I really do love Jamaican rum or maybe a Haitian uh, Claren would be really nice, which is kind of like a rum agricole style rum from Haiti, which would be really, really nice depending on, it just depends on what flavors I want to get. Uh, also, you could do like a split base of like Jamaican rum and then you could do, you could do like an ounce and a half of Jamaican rum and then half an ounce of like, uh, I don't know, like a blackstrap rum made out of blackstrap molasses. It'd be really uh, dark sugar flavors and kind of a burnt flavor to it, which is really nice. Um, but play around, but absolutely just do the same exact thing and then just add two ounces of rum instead or gin actually you could do You know, I think the first sours were actually gin not whiskey um, So there you go Need a cocktail get through it hint Leandro should be doing my uni exam But taking a break the exam has moved to online so doing my master's degree exam in forensic science online now Need a cocktail to get through it. Yes, you do need a cocktail to get through it. I agree but do your work and, you know, become a, what are you going to become? What are you studying to be? Are you going to be a forensic pathologist? 
Kieran? Kieran? Kieran. Yeah, nice name. Robin Nuquist, Chris Twiggs, anything whiskey can do, rum can do better. I agree. I'm becoming a real big rum nerd lately. I have been drinking whiskey for the entire time that I have been, I actually have been drinking whiskey for longer than I've been legally able to drink, but, but uh, I, I, I do love rum and I'm finding, uh, you know, I'm kind of embarrassed to say that I didn't really pay attention to rum for a really, really long, long, long time in my career. Uh, and I discovered it about three years ago and I took a deep dive and I just went down the ma -e fin rabbit hole on the rum. I love it now. And you know what? Rum is amazing and it deserves all, uh, it deserves all of the prestige and all of the attention that whiskey gets. Absolutely. Made a riff on a Laurel Canyon today since I only had a Maro de Angostura. Nice. And how did it turn out, David Thompson? I've been making much more cocktails during all this. Really want to get into gin and rum drinks. Which would you recommend at the Educated Barfly? Which would I recommend for gin? Well, gin cocktails, you got to do an east side cocktail. Literally, go into my playlist and then just hit the gin playlist and you will find a thousand. And then also rum as well. You'll find a ton of tiki drinks. You'll find a lot of stuff that we've done with rum. Rum is like you got to figure out like what kind of rum do you want to be playing with or do you want to kind of play with it all, you know, because rum is a huge category and there's a lot and no, no two rums are alike. You know, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of variety in rums. Amazing amount of varieties. Watching from Melbourne, Australia. Elias, welcome. Made a Knickerbocker for the first time over the weekend, but the raspberry notes were almost absent. I made my raspberry syrup 111. What's your take? Uh, I do a one-to-one -one simple syrup when I make raspberry syrup. I do like a one-to-one -one and then I do something like 300, 350 grams of um, raspberry and then there's two ways you can do it. If you have a, if you have a, uh, a, an immersion circulator, if you can sous vide it, then you can uh, really extract a lot of flavor from the heat of the sous vide uh, and I would do about 135 degrees for two hours. And then I also put a little dash of citric acid in it to kind of brighten it up a little bit. Uh, if you don't, you can still put the citric acid in it. But what I do is I put it in a jar and then I lightly mash up all of the raspberries and I toss them in there and I'll let them sit overnight and let it just like pull the raspberry out. And then I throw it all into a stranger at strainer and then mash the raspberry through the strainer and then double strain it to make sure that all the seeds and stuff are out. And that's basically how I'll make my raspberry syrup. Studying for a few things. I would like to be a crime science examiner, a forensic scientist in the labs, and hopefully a forensic pathologist. Thanks for complimenting my name. Strange spelling. Yeah, I had to look at it. I did a double take on your name because it is a little bit of a strange spelling, but hey, cool, man. I don't know if I could be a crime scene examiner. That's, that's crazy, but more power to you. I love that. I'm actually a really big true crime buff. Like, like, embar like, I, I'm, like it, I'm a big true crime buff, so... I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts and stuff, so. Not that that has anything to do with what you're studying for. All right, Mezcal Sour, 1.5. Let's go half Ramazzotti, half Orja. One lime juice, one egg white. I gotta try that. Although it seems like a little bit, Ramazzotti half and then Orja half. Is it sweet enough? Is it balancing the lime enough? I could see it maybe doing that. I don't know. Depends on the Orja, I guess. But it sounds good. Also, I want to say that the ratio of coffee beans to water for cold brew concentrate in your breakfast stout ended up being the best homemade cold brew I have achieved. Thank you. I appreciate that. I actually are indeed that those specs for quite some time to kind of get the ratio that I wanted, and I made a lot of batches of cold brew uh, to figure it out. But we also figured it out for coals as well, because that uh, Mexican cold brew stout, that Mexican breakfast stout, we made for coals for a coals menu. So, love your channel. Just bought uh, just. Bought some mango liqueur. What can I make with it? I don't know. I haven't really played with mango liqueur so much, but you could always use it as like a half an ounce as like a little mango lilt, especially in gin drinks or vodka drinks. If you want to make a vodka drink, cut out half an ounce of the vodka and add half an ounce of the mango. As long as none of the other flavors are, uh, are competing with it, then, um, then uh, I think it'd be fine. You get like a little nice, as long as it's like light, bright, light, bright, Flavors in your cocktail, the mango's going to go well. Would you do some tasting notes on Bogart's Bitters and the Silent Pool Gin that I sent you? Well, Cameron Hitchman, I think we're... Marius, okay, here's the deal. Cameron Hitchman, we have not got... Like, we have not actually... I don't know if we've actually obtained 
the, the, uh, the stuff from Bitters and Bottles that you sent us because basically we had you send it to our workshop, to Marius' workshop. And the, uh, the terrible, horrible uh, delivery personnel of the delivery company that Bitters and Bottles uses keeps on leaving notes and saying that there's nobody there when somebody is actually there. And I got to say, when I got my Bitters and Bottles package in the other day, they threw it over my gate. Luckily, they didn't break the bottles, but they threw it over my gate, even though it clearly is marked on the package that um, there needed to be a 21-year-old signature. They just tossed it over the gate, so... Um, so, uh, I'm not like Marius is now typing in the text edit. Marius, did we actually get that? It has been delivered finally Cameron Hitchman, but I haven't seen the bottles yet, but yes, I will do a tasting of both of them for you. Absolutely. The thing is, is that the ones that you sent me, do you want me to just do a tasting? You want me to make a cocktail with it and do a video? Cause I'll do both. Uh, or I can bring it into the, uh, we can bring it into a future live stream and video if you want up to you, whatever you want me to do with it. I'm there for you. What's your all-time favorite beer style? Ooh, I don't know, man. I really like Pilsner. I know that's boring to some of y'all, but I grew up, you know, I grew up in Boston, so I grew up drinking like ales and stouts and, oh, this is what we're going to drink. Uh, and I'm just kind of over it. There are some good ales and stouts that I like these days, but really I like a nice, crisp, light, medium bitter Pilsner. There's a local distillery that calls for marionette, but it is only available in Australia. Do you have a recommendation for an apricot liqueur here in the States? Yeah, I usually use um, Rothman and Winter apricot liqueur. Uh, you can find some other ones. I'm pretty sure there are some boutique uh, producers that also make it. You could check out Giffard probably has one and Mary Brizard probably has a decent one as well. Um, but I use the uh, uh, Rothman and Winter for that one. Cameron Hitchman. Were you there? Oh, I thought I saw you. Nope. Scott Carlson and last November. Laurel Canyon Riff, Batavia, Iraq. Hamilton, Jamaican. Oh, I love me some Hamilton, Jamaican black. And I got a bottle of it. Uh, half an ounce of Dolan, half an ounce of Amaro Angostura, orange slice cardamom. Oh, that sounds good. David Thompson, we're going to try that out. Plus, I actually haven't made a Batavia, Iraq cocktail on this channel yet. I have been meaning to, but I haven't actually done one yet. What are you using? Are you using the Batavia Iraq Van Oosten? Can you tell me that, Mr. Thompson? What do we got? Wildlife and whiskey. Chris Twiggs. Everyone click like. Yeah, everyone click like. <laughs> do you have a preferred bitters? Uh, you know, honestly, as far as preferred brands or preferred actual bitters? I mean, obviously, I really love Angostura bitters. Um, I really love, uh, you know, like, you know, your or I got my orange. My preferred orange is a 50-50 of Regan and Fees. I really like Fee's bitters. I was actually having a conversation a little bit with someone here who asked me on a comment whether they could uh, put cucumber bitters in place of uh, cucumber juice. And I said, well, that's going to be hard because the cucumbers bitters, they might actually work in the drink, but they're not going to sub for fresh cucumber because um, they're going to have other bittering elements in it. But I got to say that uh, that um, Fees really does bitters that really taste like the flavor of the thing it says. So the grapefruit bitters is super grapefruity. Um, if they did a cucumber, which I don't know if they did, but if they did, that actually might be a good sub. So I really like them a lot. I like Bitterman's uh, bitters. I use a ton of their bitters in my cocktails. I love them as well, but I don't have one favorite. Uh, hey, so I don't know. So did we successfully, um, get rid of the myth of the, uh, reverse dry shake guys? Did we actually successfully do that? I'll wait for your answer. Now I offered that to you guys and nobody took it. So I'm taking it back. But, uh, today I was very smart and I, I got myself this. This is a cool little thing that we obtained recently. It's very cute and I like it. You can put this next to your bed. I am not going to forget to drink water tonight. Yeah, sorry, Bob. Let's see what else. Wow, studying five years straight. But you know what? You're going to be good at what you do there, Kieran. Oh, Esteban Soleranzo is here. One of our members. Will Brown, another member. Thank you guys for your membership. Do you have a favorite cocktail 
bar experience that made you want to be a cocktail bartender. Mine was at Attaboy when I had their freight train swizzle. I think we actually did the freight train swizzle on this channel. I love Attaboy and milk and that comes from the milk and honey uh, tradition of bars. Um, honestly, I... Uh, Thank you, Lunar Galaxy. Uh, I became a, a cocktail bartender out of necessity. Uh, I had been working in nightclubs uh, because I was an actor and I was trying to uh, keep my day days free for auditions. So I was working at night in a nightclub. Then I went to work at a wine bar after the nightclub thing. I just got over it and um, I worked at a wine bar. And then after the wine bar, uh, I basically got my job at Kohl's, and that was nine, nine years ago. And uh, I, I had not really thought much about cocktails. I liked cocktails, but I didn't know anything about classic cocktails, and I learned everything there, and it changed my life. Or I wouldn't be here in front of you. So, as I mean, you know, it's, it, it, cha it, it like changed my life. But I think that, you know, actually working in it is what gave me the passion, you know? And I've always been a big history buff, so when I knew that history, like when I started doing the deep dives on, like, history of cocktails, I was, like, hooked. So I'm a really big history nerd. I love history. What do you think of saline solution in drinks? I know a bunch of major bar programs are putting them in almost everything. I think saline solution should and could be put in, uh, put it in almost everything. And the reason why is because it opens up flavors. So a little drop of saline solution will open up the flavors of just about anything. So I'm a big fan of putting it in any drink you want to put it into. I don't necessarily do that all the time, but I'm a fan of it. Do you two go to college anywhere? I'm not sure if that was, is that toward me? You ever thrown up, have you ever thrown up from drinking too much? Any stories? Well, I think everyone's thrown up from drinking too much, especially in your young days when you, uh, you know, overdo it to the point where you, like I've never actually blacked out, but I've gotten to the point where I've like been laying in bed and I had the spins and you can't go to sleep and you don't want to be awake and it's the worst. It's the worst, the absolute worst. Don't ever do that to yourself, guys. Just drink responsibly. Just drink a, just drink a little bit to enjoy what you're drinking, and that's it. Don't overdo it, though, because that's not fun. Having, a, having a, the star, I do like it, but not as much as the regular Manhattan. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, is that I say, like, almost as good as. Almost as good as. Uh, Got to look up how to make this saline solution. I mean, it's just, basically, saline solution is just is salt and water. The question is, uh, you know, what percentage of saline do you want to have? And that's what you want to do. Like, do you want to have a 10% or a 20% solution? Uh, usually, most drinks, they'll do like a 10% solution. So mostly water, a little bit of, a little bit of salt. Um, oops, before, I've uh, sent before I finished writing, but that's very cool. How do you find your passion working in it? Slow gin fizz with old Tom. All right, rum drinks seem to be very specific with spirits. Basic bourbon drinks can have any basic spirit, e.g. Maker's Wild Turkey in a sour. Any recommendations on semi-universal rums? Well, that's the thing is that there are semi-universal rums if that rum is in a specific category, but there are, that, there are no, like, like, what is a universal rum? Like, universal rum would be white rum, you could say. And then the thing is, is that each white rum can be aged or not aged, it can be from a lot of different uh, uh, islands, it can be a blend of different rums from different islands, like Banks, like Banks Five Island Rum or Banks Seven, uh, or it can be from one island, like there is no standard universal. Now there are, that's why they get broken down into like white rum, dark rum, blackstrap rum, uh, you know, you've got your, uh, uh, you know, your Guyana and uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Demerara rum, which all comes from Guyana. But there is no one that is just like universal, you know? And that, that's the thing, is that you kind of have to start sort of learning about rum to really use it well. Melra, do you have a favorite cocktail bar experience though? Any standouts or like top? Yeah, I mean, it had a lot of wonderful, uh, I mean, just recently, you know, I uh, uh, went to Donna in New York and I, I, I love that place. That place is amazing. Um, uh, the Varnish, which is a bar that I've worked in the front bar of for a really long time, is always a good experience when I go there. Um, uh, bar Claxon is another one that I really like a lot here in LA. I uh, have not been to Death & Company here yet, so haven't done that yet, but I, I plan on it. It's just that now we're, you know, in this time that we have to sit inside our house. 
and we're doing this. But I will be getting to a lot of bars, and I'm actually doing a video series on bars on Barfly Freeport. So go sub that channel if you haven't. Um, you know, uh, I don't know, like the the Nomad. I really like a lot of the drinks that I've had at the Nomad. Um, I I've, I've had only really very good experiences. I you know I wouldn't mention the bad experiences. I think. What else? What do we got? Oh, would you post a video on a white linen? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll post a video on a white linen. Why not? New comments aren't showing in, showing up. Huh, interesting. That's weird. The comments just stopped. I was like looking at seeing what was going on, but the comments just kind of stopped. They stopped scrolling for some odd reason. So now Marius is trying to figure out how to get them back. I don't know. But we didn't lose our... We didn't lose our internet, did we? No, I don't think so. I don't think we lost our internet, so I don't know. Cheers, guys. I can't see your comments. Comments have been... Oh, here we go. Any speakeasies experiences? Uh, yeah, you know what? Honestly, I went to Attaboy in Nashville, in East Nashville, not the New York one, but the East Nashville one, and it was mm, awesome. I was in Nashville uh, to do a distillery tour. Well, not really a distillery tour. To basically do like, a, like Uncle Nearest invited us to come learn about Uncle Nearest and kind of tour the site of their future distillery. Um, and I had a great time. We went all over, uh, Na- like we went all over like Nashville first night, and then like, Went out to Shelbyville, which is where they're uh, putting the distillery on a on a on a horse farm, and then on top of that, or like a it was like a horse training ranch, I think. And then on top of that, we went uh, we went to Lynchburg and everything. And it was really really great. And we went to the first night that we were there, we went to Attaboy, and it was fan frickin tastic. Mm, excuse me, a little burpy poo there. Bar nineteen nineteen San Antonio is the best biggies. I have not been. But I'll put it on the list. Leandro, thank you for the premier instructor on how to make drinks. Much love. My go-to place. Hey, thank you, PV. Really appreciate that. Chris Twiggs, what YouTube bartender would you like to collaborate with but haven't yet? Well, I mean, I would, I mean, here's the thing. We've been talking to Steve the Bartender for a really long time. I'd love to do an actual in-person collaboration with Steve the Bartender. Um, I'd love to do a collaboration. You know what I would really love to do is um, one of my favorite channels, which I think is kind of an underrated channel, is Truffles on the Rocks. That guy uh, really knows what he's doing. Uh, He always has a really interesting take. I like his visual aesthetic. But what I would like to do with Truffles on the Rocks, because we've already done a collaboration, but what I really like to do is an in-person collaboration where me and Marius travel to Canada and we go to bars. We just like bar hop with him. But he just seems like a really fun, nice guy. And uh, I would love to do some bar hopping videos uh, with him. So that would be kind of on the top of my list. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who else. Um, I would. The thing is, is that I'll collaborate with anybody that wants to collaborate. I'm all about collaboration. I think that, you know, I'm not a person that's very competitive. I don't think that that everyone, that someone just has to be the top bartender. I think that all the people that are on YouTube that are doing this content is a lot of fun and we should all support each other and be a big supportive community. So I'll literally collaborate with anybody. Um, I collaborated with an RV channel. that There, there are this couple that came into Kohl's a little while ago um, called Come Away With Me RV, I think. And they're like literally a couple that just, they live in an RV. They do van life, basically that whole van life thing. And they live in their RV and they have a YouTube channel. And they came into Kohl's. This was right before the, the, the COVID-19 kind of put us all out of work. And when they came in, I was talking, you know, I was just talking to them because I talk to everyone that comes in. And I'm really curious. And they were like, we have a YouTube channel? I was like, I have a YouTube channel. And they were like, cool. Do you mind if we film a little bit of the restaurant? And I was like, no. And then they filmed a little segment with me. And now I'm on their YouTube channel that came out a couple days ago. So there you go. Yeah, Canada, Troubles on the Rocks idea sounds great. Yeah, I really want to do that. That is like uh, top of my list of something that I would like to do. Did Marius forget something? I don't know. What did Marius forget, David Thompson? Your home bar sounds amazing. Ooh, Darren Orange, send us a picture. I want to see your home bar. Uh, I know someone who loves rum and uh, rum and black team. She saw a coffee, whiskey, whip, 
top and cocktail that she thought would be good, but wondered if it, if I could swap the ingredients. What's like, are you talking about, what are you talking about? Like whipped, whipped topping cocktail. I don't think I forgot. I don't, I don't, what did he forget? David Thompson. What did he forget? I want to know. Get back with how to drink. That episode is hilarious. Yes, we love Greg. Uh, that's another thing is I would definitely, but Chris Twiggs actually said any bartending channel that you haven't yet collaborated with. I kind of skirted the question though because I, tr- I have collabor- collaborated with Truffles on the Rocks. I actually owe Truffles on the Rocks a video. I, want, I need to make the cocktail that I challenged him to make. He made it and then the whole COVID things happened. Uh, I got all the ingredients at home though, so I'm on the uh, very soon in an upcoming episode. I'll be making that cocktail and giving my impressions. But I'm sure it's brilliant, and I really like that what that guy does. He's, he 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 has a. If you guys haven't subbed that channel, you should go and sub him right now because he's awesome. He's he does a really great job. Yes, we'll do that someday. We've been trying to organize so that Greg can phone. Yeah, that is true. Marius is on it. Um, you know, life and you know. Uh, quarantine as well. We can't do it now, but we've been trying to do some stuff with Greg. We like Greg. He's good. He's a good dude. Send my, send your home bar picks to, um, the educated barfly at gmail.com, or you can, uh, probably just fill out a form on our, on our website, the educated There's like a contact us form. Uh, you can just either send links or pictures, but you can just send it to our Gmail. I'd love to see anybody's home bar though. Uh, do you know of a liquor that is similar to the flavor of black tea? A liqueur that is similar to the flavor of black tea? Hmm. Not off the top of my head. I'm sure there's some tea liqueur out there, though. Or you can tag us on Instagram, too. That's a good idea, Marius. Absolutely. I've made 50-plus cocktails from your channel. Immensely appreciate all the great and informative videos. Thank you, Aaron. I really appreciate that. And I'm really happy to know that people are out there that want to make the cocktails and find our channel to be informative because that was the whole point from the beginning, you know? The whole point, the whole reason why this happened is because Marius and I have been working together and then I was at Kohl's and a lot of people were like, you love teaching people how to make drinks so much. Why don't you just, why don't you just teach a class? And so I started teaching classes and I didn't like it. I was just, that was not my thing. I mean, I liked it, but it was just like too much, like, it was just like too much to organize and I just, you know, I have two little kids, like I just don't have time in, in, in life. So the, the bar, the, the YouTube channel was like the next thing, like, let's do that instead. And, it, and I'm glad it's working. I'm glad that you guys are, are getting something out of it. It's awesome. How long does it take for you to set up bar before shift? Uh, it takes me about, depends. I mean, it, it, how long would it take? How long does it take me? Uh, I've been setting up the same bar for nine years. It takes me a half an hour to set the bar up to 45 minutes. Um, I like to leave myself an hour because I like to putz around before work. But uh, if you didn't know how to set up the bar, it would probably take you about 60 to 90 minutes to set up. Uh, Cachaca versus rum agricole. Well, it's like rum agri... Eh. They're very similar. I'll say that. But what do you mean versus? What do I like better? I don't know. I like them both. Do I have to pick? Leandro, what's your least favorite spirit? Hmm. I know it's some... I mean, you guys just want to know what I don't like, do, don't you? Everybody was like, there's absolutely no way that you can make 400 videos and like every cocktail. I just made you 400 of my favorite cocktails. Uh, I don't know. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Oh, ooh, uh, there are some bitters like that uh, Gamble Dance, which is uh, pretty goddamn rough. That, I can't say with a straight face, I like very much, I gotta say. But I'm sure it'll grow on me. You know, I didn't like Campari when I first tried it. The first Negroni I had, I almost spit it out and said, what the fuck is this? But... If you keep drinking something or you keep getting exposed to it, you can train your palate. Like your palate will, you will train your palate and then when, when you do, you will taste things in there you didn't taste on the first sip. That's why pediatricians say kids don't know if they like something until they've tried it 15 times. Because you have to adjust your palate to the flavor. And if you do that, you will find nuances in it. So for instance, I did not like Malort when I first tried it. Now that I've been drinking, I've, I've gone through half a bottle of Malort, my palate's pretty used to it, and I'm noticing flavor nuances in there that I didn't before, and it's really not that bad. I'm still not drinking it on the, sh- on the stream, though. 
Okay, Chilean or Peruvian Pisco. I'm not, uh, you know what? I'm not touching that one, man. You know what? Ask the Chileans and the Peruvians about the Pisco. Not, don't ask me because I'm, that'll open up a whole can of worms on the internet if I weigh in on that. So I'm staying out of that one. All right, suggestions for, how, for low ingredient cocktails while supplies shopping trips are less than usual. Appreciate y'all doing this. Happy hours. I work in healthcare organizing, and this is a welcome break. Sweet. Uh, all right. Thank you, Rebecca. I appreciate it, and, I, and thank you so much for doing what you do. I appreciate you absolutely. Now, uh, suggestions for low ingredient cocktails. While uh, so, so all of the videos that we're releasing now are are pretty much low ingredient. But like a, a sour is a really good. A sour, you can as long as you have lemons or limes or any citrus, sugar, water. All right, and any base spirit, anything at all, you can make a sour. So that's a very good place to start. And basically like a Tom Collins, right, is like a sour lengthened with water and like a gin sour lengthened with water. So you can lengthen it if you want to without egg white. You can put egg white, you can not put egg white. It is infinitely adaptable, the sour. So that is a good place to go. I like Tres Agaves Blanco Tequila. That's pretty good. I bathe in Malort and I love it now. Malort is my muse. Yes, yes, sir, Evan. Yeah, what else? Who else? Laugh my ass. Smart men not getting into the Pisco battle. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Edward Sittler. Drinking a Laurel Canyon right now, although I had to sub orange for grapefruit bitters. Probably the best martini variation I've had. Oh, awesome, man. Glad you like it. It is basically a cobble hill, and the cobble hill. The, so it's a cobble hill variation that we made, and the cobble hill uh, was created by Sam Ross, the guy, one of the co-owners of Attaboy. So there you go, boom. That's how you bring it back around. Uh, wonder what a vodka sour would be like. It would be very sour forward and uh, a little bit of booze. Can you talk about different Amaros? There are just so many to choose from. I can talk about different Amaros, but literally this stream would have to be like four hours long. I am going to do a video breaking down Amaros, telling you the history, telling you all of, and telling you like the different, basically telling you the different regions, like the different styles. There's a four different styles of Amaro, I believe. And then after that, we'll taste through those styles a little bit and I will, don't worry, I've got you. I got you. I got you on the, on the Amaro, but we're not doing it today because it's just too big a subject and we don't have the time. I mean, uh, I don't know what time it is. 7.49. Uh, we're wrapping this up in the next 10 or 15 minutes. So what do we got? What do we got? Marius is rooting around in my email. Should I be worried? Still, uh, Jägermeister video... But for Disarano, yes, I will do that as well. Dis, but Disarano, I got to tell you, Disarano is a brand of uh, amaretto liqueur, right? It's just amaretto, the same way that the Lazzaroni would be amaretto. I actually prefer Lazzaroni, but I have a bottle of Disarano. I will do an amaretto video, not necessarily. I mean, Disarano, Lazzaroni. There's a. I mean, it's tomato, tomato. You know what I mean? You can, you can do, you can, you can sub them one for one. Oh, is that somebody's bar? Did somebody just send their picture of their bar? Ooh, we're putting it up. Oh, home bar. Cool. I love this. Sweet. Marius is that too. Favorite cocktail with Amaro Montenegro? The Laurel Canyon, dude. Come on. Come on, dude. The Laurel Canyon. Actually, I also make one called a Whip Hand that has a few dashes of Amaro. I use the Amaro Montenegro as the bitters in it. It's really good as well. Um, but uh, I'm not going to tell you the specs because it may be a video in uh, the future. But thank you for the super chat, random MF hero. I appreciate it. Uh, I've heard, the, the thing about Sangrita is that, well, here you go, home bar, Marius is, are you trying to resize it, Marius? Is that what you're trying? Just put it up in the whole thing. Let's see what you got there. Oh, there you go, he's putting it up so I'm not obscured. You can obscure me for a second, it doesn't matter. What do we got there? Some aviation, Roku vodka. It's like uh, you, you you made like a bar shelf inside your inside your pantry. I like that. That's cool. You got some Aperol. I see. It's a, a pretty nice selection. Is that a Mister Black? Is that a Mr. Black with a uh, with a little pour spout on it? Sweet! 
It's a good little selection you got there. I like this like little, there's like this little uh, uh, kind of rainbowy Moscow Mule mug as well. Can you discuss Sangrita variant? So the thing about Sangrita is that it is a kind of tomato, ba tomato and, and fruit based shot that you take with uh, tequila or mezcal. I usually actually do it with mezcal, uh, but I've only ever had fresh. And I'm not sure what the variants are. I'm not like a, I'm not bit, like I don't know that a ton about Sangrita. Have you ever tried an all Amari cocktail? Local bar had it and loved it. Been making it ever since. Yeah, I actually created an all Amari cocktail called the Bitter Italian, which is uh, Amaro, Chiachiaro, Maraschino, Aperol, and Lemon. Um, and uh, it's, it's pretty good. It actually got published in a book called Nightcap by uh, Karen Newman. You should go pick it up. Mr. Black is so good. I like Mr. Black. It's so good. San York Bar Picks. I'd love to see him, yeah. How would you do your version of a good Michelada? This is what I do for a Michelada. Here, you want the specs for a good Michelada? I get my favorite Pilsner, all right? Whatever you want to do. Pilsner or Kell works really nice. You can do, uh, uh, you can even do a Kolsch if you want to do it. I've done it with Kolsch. It's pretty good. So basically you do um, three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. No, sorry, half an ounce of lime juice. No, sorry, three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, half an ounce of Worcestershire sauce. Um, and then I basically fill up the Bloody Mary just, just so. Pour in the beer. Just give it like a little roll real quick. And there you have it. Or what you could do is you could uh, do three quarters lime, half, uh, uh, half uh, Worcestershire. Yeah, what did I say? Yeah, that's, that's Worcestershire. Three quarters of an ounce of lime, half Worcestershire. Uh, fill the beer up about three quarters of the way up and then pour in your Bloody Mary mix. Give it a roll. Boom, there it is. Uh, the bitter Italian sounds like my in-laws. <laughs> that's funny. The bitter, it's really funny because I'm also of Italian descent. And uh, when I said, uh, I made it for a regular, they said, oh, this is really good. What is it called? Uh, and they said, and I said, it's called the bitter Italian. And, go, and, he, and he went, you named a drink after yourself? And I was like, you know what? But that was pretty funny. Uh, Ramazzotti, Maletti, one of each half Nonino served in a big, on a big rock. Ooh. So wait, one Nonino, one Ramazzotti, one Angostura. No, sorry, half Nonino, one. So one Ramazzotti, one Angostura, one Maletti, half Nonino served on a big rock. Whoa, I'm going to try that. That sounds crazy. That sounds super crazy. What do you do when you come to a standstill when developing a new cocktail? Ah, oh, Eric Platt, where are you stuck? Because honestly, I don't, I mean, the thing is, is that when you come to a standstill, I don't come to a standstill because I, what I try to do is taste through every element of the cocktail and figure out what is failing. Does it need more body? Does it need more bitters? Is it too sweet? How are the flavors working? Are they balanced? And then I always have an inspiration for my cocktail on hand. So I kind of go back to that and figure out, like sometimes I'm trying to make, sometimes I tasted a flavor and I want to make a cocktail that tastes like that flavor. And so I go back to that source to taste it, to figure out if I'm hitting those notes, you know? Thanks for the stream. Gonna finish the exam. Wish me luck. I wish you luck, Kieran. Thank you so much for the super chat. And uh, you know, Here's to the end of five years of studying. I'm sure you'll do well. All right, what we got? There's two whiskey sours down. I need a little more water. All right, five more minutes, you guys. I got to skedaddle tonight because uh, I got stuff to do tomorrow. Well, barfly stuff to do really tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to ask, why is liqueur 43 so prevalent in so many bars? I see it everywhere. Uh, Le Four, Le Four 43 is just really, it's just a really nice kind of vanilla forward liqueur that people use. What's great about Le Four 43 is that it modifies the flavor of spirits in really surprising ways. So if you want to do a little test, what you do is you pour yourself out some gin, bourbon, uh, vodka, well not vodka really, but you go like gin, bourbon, rum, Tequila, right? Take those, taste them, then drink some water, and then do the same exact flight, but then add just a little splash of liqueur 43 in each one of them and see what happens. Three bucks. Thank you, Chris. 
Uh, what's the maximum amount of drinks I should make in a tin? I usually make two to four for friends and roommates at a time. Thanks for the stream, man. I usually do two drinks per tin. That's it. So if I want to do four, I use two in each tin. Three, you're cutting it because you remember you're displacing a lot of uh, a lot of uh, volume with the ice that you put in there, and you want to make sure that you shake over. Uh, you want to make sure that you shake over uh, like a good amount of ice. So a new home bar from Dustin. Here we go. Boom, what do you got there? Ooh, look, look, Elijah Craig, small batch. You got some nice stuff there. Svedka, plantation pineapple, one of my favorites. That looks like an Appleton 12 year. Ooh, there you go, man. That's my jam right there. You got uh, some Batavia Iraq, Campari. You got a good selection of stuff. I like it. You got some Los Altos, looks like Repo tequila. And then uh, that Ray and Nephew overproof. Don't don't think that escaped my notice. I like it. Good job. That's a good good little selection. What's that bottle behind the Elijah Craig though? There's a little knob creek in there too. Sneaked up on us. I like it. That's another home bar. Love it. Go, is that a corner of a counter? Just set aside any any space that you need. You know, bar cart corner of a counter inside a closet. Who cares? Thanks, Leander. Hoping to do PhD after five years. May not be the end yet. Oh, damn. All right. Well, you know, that's more school than I could stomach, but I, uh, I, uh, more power to you, Kieran. Leander, I love the channel. Thank you for what you, all you do. Thank you for watching. Making quarantine furlough enjoyable. Any tips for making clear ice? Yeah, I use a cooler. I only get one inch clear. Freezer temp, you use distilled. Okay. Ah. Oh, let's break through. Let's break through all of the myths uh, about making clear ice. You want a cooler like this, four liters. You make a cooler, right? You rip the lid off, okay? You add your, you add your water in here. Now, here's the thing. If you let this sit for too long in the freezer, then you will have a little bit of clear and then some cloudy on top, which you can cut away if you want to. The thing is, is that what you really want to do is you want to freeze it overnight. I let it go for about 12 hours, sometimes 14 hours. And what that does is freezes the clear. Because here's the thing, what's happening during uh, uh, directional freezing, the, the reason why it works is because impurities or whatever, and then gases, they freeze last and the pure water freezes first. So what happens is, is that when you put it in a cooler, and you have one side exposed, you are forcing the cooler, you're basically forcing the cold air to freeze it from the top down. And because the, um, because the, the impurities or whatever and the gases will freeze last, it'll freeze the pure water first. So if you take it out before it has had time to freeze completely, you pull it out after about 12 hours or so, maybe 13 or 14, you, you pull it out and when you pull it out, you will see you have the clear ice here and then you will have a skeleton around a liquid center on the inside. And basically what you wanna do is you wanna cut that ice away, you can save the skeleton for shaking and then it drain all that water out because all that water is what was destined to be cloudy. And then you have about this much clear. And then you take that, you kind of shave it up and then shape it and then because water has run on it, cold water has run on it, it actually tempered itself and it's perfect for cutting into blocks. That's how you make clear ice. I have a video on it. It's kind of an old video. I was thinking about redoing the video because I have learned some things. Like for instance, if you use hot water, all right, even if you just run hot water out of your tap, make your tap the hardest it can go, okay? If you have hot water, you won't get bubbles inside the clear ice. So basically the clear ice will still be clear, but it, you can get ice forms inside that. These little wavy ice forms or little tiny pinprick bubbles in there. You can avoid that by using hot water. But the thing is, is that it just take a little bit longer to freeze because it has to cool down to freezing and then freeze. So there you go. All of the, all of the tips and tricks on making clear ice. Uh, what do we got? We got some new bar picks. Let's see them, Marius. Home bar from Dustin Lewis. Time to do some home bars. Time to do some home bars? Six to seven people? Whoa. Oh, wow. Okay. Do some home bars, dude. Let's do it. Six to seven people sent. Let's take a look. 
All right. And then we're going to be signing out after the home bars, my friend, is 8 o'clock. Time for Daddy to uh, sit on the couch and watch some Netflixy, if you know what I mean. Daddy worked real hard today. Let's see what we got. What do we got? Ooh, here we go. Oh, that is beautiful bar. Beautiful. I only just saw it for a second. Marius hasn't even gotten it onto the screen yet, and it's just... Wow. Hey, just make it full screen, Marius, if it's going to be easier. Stop resizing. Just make it full screen. Let everyone see it. You want, what are you going for, like, the reveal? Because it's like the picture is behind. It's, go full screen, bro. Let them see this beautiful bar. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Oh, and look there. I'm, on the, I'm in the TV on the corner. <laughs> Hell yeah, that is beautiful. That is wonderful. Oh, I love the lighting underneath the bar too where the stools are. Very, very nice. Can't really see your selection. It's not that easy. Uh, Mary has said it's not that easy because I'm giving him a little bit of guff. All right, sorry, I'll stop giving you guff. All right, let's scroll to the next bar. This is, this is uh, Darren Orange. Wow, this is a wonderful bar, Darren Orange. I love it. Let's go to the next one and see what the next one looks like. Here we... What, was that like an entire room? Which one of you has a screening room? <laughs> Sorry, I'm like looking at it so intently, the, the computer to see. Here we go. Oh, oh, this is a screening room. That's a screening room. Wait, Darren Orange, you have a screening room that you're screening this in? Oh my God, that's amazing. That's awesome. Wait, this isn't Darren Orange. This is a new, this is Blake Butler. This is Darren Orange. Wow. Cool. All right, we're, we're going to wait for Marius to queue up the other ones. I'm going to put these in the sink. Oh, yeah. All right. Have a little glassy pool of water pants. All right, Blake Butler, here we are. Let's see what we got. There we are. What do we got here? Nice. I love this display case. It's, it's from the 50s. It's beautiful. That is beautiful. I love that. I need that for my house. I'm going to come over to your house and take it because I need it. I love it. It's, so, so, it's like, what is that from the, it's got to be like mid-century modern piece, right? From the 40s or 50s? That is, it's like, it's, it's like an old TV set, but there's booze in it. <laughs> That's fine. That is awesome. I love that. That is really, really nice. Good one. This has been fun, guys. Ooh, nice cabinet. Here we go. Let's see. Oh, I love the way you've situated the glassware. What do we got here? Everyone seems like everyone's got a bottle of uh, Bombay. Absolute Mandarin. Oh, cool. Chambord. Bacari. Got some Grand Marnier. Aperol. Okay. Whose is this, Marius? What's the name? We're gonna have to get, we're gonna have to, you gotta get rid of that roses. We're gonna make you some fresh pomegranate syrup there. Some uh, fresh grenadine. Uh, yeah, but nice cabinet. I love the cabinet. Cabinet's beautiful. Betty Lee, it's Betty Lee's. All right, Betty Lee. You need to, we need to get you to make some fresh uh, grenadine, but it's a very, very nice. Uh, cabinet. I like it. It's good. I love these home bar setups. These are, they're awesome. You would be shocked if you saw mine.
What do we got? Did we do them all? Well, that one's pretty cool too with the octagons. Oh, it's kind of on the side, but uh, I love those little, I love those shelves on the wall. They're really nice. I said octagons, but they're not octagons. I don't know my shapes. I was going to say trapezoid, but that's not trapezoid. I don't know my shapes. It, that's what's, that is what is the truth, especially after two whiskey sours. Then I really don't know my shapes. Here we go. There's another one. Booze cabinets. I think I just like anything, any any flat surface or closet or room that contains lots of booze. I think that's kind of the end of it. That's that's what I really like. I just like booze, and I like things that contain booze. All right. Well, oh, there it is. We have to do a little editing because it was on its side. Very cool. There we go. It's all resized. Nice. I like it. Got some wine. Got some booze. What do you got in there? Let's see what we got. Oh, big old bottle on the door. We're going to have to help you get some green bar distillery. I see a maraschino back there. I see a Carpano Antica back there. I'm assuming that's... Is that Rum Babincourt? I can't really tell from the side. This is Robin Newquist. Robin Newquist's bar. We got some Scrappy's Lavender Bitters, it looks like. Angostura, a jar of something. Nice. It's a nice little selection. I like that too. All right, is that it? Is that, is that, did more people send bars? Wow, you guys really, yeah. Oh, here we go, there's another one. Mike T. Mike T in the hizzy. For some reason it keeps on making them sideways, but that's all right. Mike T. Marius is about to write Mike T in the thing. We gotta flip it. All right, transform it, rotate it. There we are. Let's see what we got here. Maraschino. You got a little old Forester in the front. Monkey shoulder. Yeah, everyone's got maraschino. I like that. A little Mr. Black. Got some bitters. A little. Ooh, I, oh, I see the old Overholt bonded down there. Laird's Laird's bonded. Got a little Plymouth Sailor Jerry. Yeah, nice, nice selection. I like this. This is a nice compact little bar cart too. I gotta go find myself one of those. I think they have something similar. Like, oh, oh my God, whose is this bar? This is like a full-on bar. Is this Mitchell Stewart? Wow. Sorry, guys. I have both um, Marius futzing around on my computer remotely, so I, I'm able to see all of the emails that he's popping up, and I'm kind of calling them out before they're actually visible to you guys, which might be kind of annoying, and I apologize for that. Uh, all right. What are we gonna, are we gonna call it on this, on this uh, is that everybody? I think there's one more. Is there one more bar to show? That is beautiful. Ben Moore. Ben and Mandy.
You know what I really love about this bar is that they saved up and then they did it in the vein of the Prancing Pony from Lord of the Rings, which is amazing. I love that. I love the little, um, you know, it's really funny. At Kohl's, we also have a barrel with beer taps in it, which I love as well. Uh, it looks like you have a nice selection of booze there as well. It's really nice. I really like the wood, the two-toned wood and the stone. Uh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful bar, Ben and Mandy. I appreciate that. There are a lot more. There are a lot more people who sent bars. Um, uh, but we're going to save them for next time, for sure. Absolutely 100% save them for next time because we are out of time. Um, we just we went a little bit over, and uh, I got some stuff to do tomorrow. But I do really love these live streams, guys, and I really love hanging out with you guys, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, so thanks for showing up to the live stream and it's good to see you guys stay safe stay healthy stay at home and uh, uh, I will try and put out as many videos as I can to entertain you guys in this really unprecedented and weird time that we are going through so yeah I don't know any questions comments concerns I'll see you in the comments on the videos or definitely feel free to email email um, thank you, Elizabeth, for the super chat. We will show some more bars next time. So if you weren't able to get your picture of your home bar out to us, get your picture of your home bar out to us and we'll show them next time at the end of the show. I got to think of something uh, good uh, to do for next week. So we, we've got some stuff in the works. May have and may not. I don't know. But uh, if you guys have any ideas of any live streams you want to see or anything that you want me to talk about or if you just want to hang out and do a QA, and a I'm all about it. Just let me know and I will see you guys on another time. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's pull up that music and I will see you guys next Monday, 7 p.m. I will, I promise, try to get some streams out a little earlier. It's just a little bit difficult with the kids being home all the time and my schedule. But I will try and figure this out because I, I, it sucks for the Europeans that they are sort of, uh, unless they want to stay up till four o'clock in the morning or they want to get up at four o'clock in the morning, they kind of can't come and do this with us. So uh, I'm actually very impressed of, the, of those of you guys who are in Europe and here during these streams, I'm impressed. I've noticed and I appreciate it. Hi, right, big fan, app developer, looking for YouTube bartender to work with, interested in making an educated barfly app. Well, email us, my friend, and, uh, and uh, I'll stop talking, and Marius can pull up the music. See you guys in another time.